I think I was quite happy to buy into the idea of, of uh, reinvention up until uh, the uh, beginning of the 80s, really. And, and it, it came about, I think, more than anything else, that when I was a, a teenager, I had it in, in my mind that I would be a creator of musicals. I, I, I sincerely wanted to write musicals um, for the West End, or for Broadway, whatever. I didn't see much further than that. Um, as a writer, and I really had the idea in my head that people would do my songs. Um, and I was not a natural performer. I didn't feel at ease on stage, ever. Um, and I had created this one character, Ziggy Stardust, that it seemed that I would be the one that would play him because nobody else was doing my songs and the chances of my actually getting a musical mounted were very slim. And so I became Ziggy Stardust for that period, whatever. And things sort of led. I like I like the idea, and I, I felt really comfortable going on stage as somebody mm -hmm. else. And it seemed a, a a rational decision to keep on doing that. And so I got quite besotted with the idea of just creating character after character. Um, and I think probably there must have been a point in the late seventies, well, I know there was, where I felt that the characters were in fact getting in the way of myself as a writer and I endeavoured to kind of kill them off and, and start writing for me uh, as, as just a, a singer-songwriter. I'm not sure if I was ever successful in that because I, I, I do take a degree of theatricality when I go on stage all the time. I, it's, you know, sort of that's how I deal with the stage situation. I'm still not comfortable on stage. But I mean, David Bowie himself is an invention. I mean, do you think of yourself as Bowie or David Jones, the boy from South London? Uh, Less and less as, as Bowie, Bowie, Bowie. <laughs> how are we I don't to even know how it? to pronounce it anymore. I've lost track. Uh, I always thought it was Bowie. I thought, well, it's a Scottish name, it must be Bowie. But nobody in Scotland pronounces it like that. They pronounce it Bowie. I a lot of what I am is, is my, the, uh, uh, my, my enthusiasms. That I've always been uh, a very curious and enthusiastic person, again, as, as from when I was a teenager. And that it really wasn't up to me to try and identify exactly what that meant. I just had to accept that I was a person that had a very short attention span, would move from one thing to another quite rapidly uh, when I got bored with the other. Um, and uh, I became comfortable with that and didn't try and identify myself or try and ask myself who I was. The less questioning I did about myself uh, as to who I was, the more comfortable I felt. But so it, now I have absolutely no knowledge of who I am, but I'm extremely happy. But do you find the business of being in the music industry as interesting and attractive as it is? I have nothing to do with the industry. I really have so little to do with it. Uh, the hub of my creativity comes from what I do and where I go. I, I put myself in places, one that, that maybe I've never been before, um, or that I've I feel there's a certain tension involved. I can't, I can't really write or produce much if I'm in a place that's, that's relaxing. I have to have a set of conflicts going around me, not necessarily of my own doing. I've learned that that is a particularly bad idea. What do you mean? So, well, I, I don't create my own conflicts in my own life. I think I might have done that to quite an extent when I was younger, is, is actually things were going too smoothly. I would be drawn, because being an addictive personality, I would be drawn to create conflicts that would produce the tension necessary to write. Now I find uh, that I can do it by observation more than being hmm. abs deeply involved in a mess <laughs> to be able to write. Yeah. Um, but the industry side of things, I really, I'm not even sure what that word actually represents to me anymore. I mean, at a personal level, you don't do drugs anymore. No, absolutely not. And you don't drink? I don't drink either, no. Not even a glass of wine or no, anything? No, it would kill me. If I what started do you mean it would kill you? I'm an alcoholic, so it, was, uh, it would be a uh, kiss of death for me to start drinking again. And my relationships with my friends, my family, everybody around me are so good and have been for so many years now, I wouldn't do anything to destroy that again. You know, it's very hard to have relationships when you're doing drugs and, uh, and drinking. I, f for me personally, anyway, um, and uh, you become closed off, unreceptive, insensitive, all the dreadful things that you've heard every other pop singer ever say. And uh, I was very lucky that I found my way out of that. Mm -hmm.
Um, it's, it's been good for me. I've reassessed my life any number of times. You said if you were 19, you wouldn't go into the music business. I think that's probably quite right. I think, I think I'd probably just be a, um, a fan and a collector of records. Uh, what would you do? I, I, I wanted to be a musician because it seemed, um, it seemed rebellious, it seemed subversive. It felt yeah. like uh, one could affect change um, to a form. It, uh, it was very hard to hear music when I was younger, you know. Um, when, I, when I was really young, you had to tune into AFN radio to hear the American mm -hmm. records. Uh, there, there was no MTV and there was no, it wasn't sort of wall-to-wall -wall blanket mm -hmm. music. And so therefore it had a kind of a, a, a call to arms kind of feeling to it. Is that this is the thing that will change things. This is uh, a dead dodgy occupation mm -hmm. to have. It still oh, produced signs of horror from people if you said you're I'm, a, I'm in rock and roll it's mm. my goodness now it's a career opportunity and the internet is now uh, uh, carries the flag of, of being subversive and possibly rebellious and chaotic nihilistic and oh yes it is it's a, forget about the micro soft element the the monopolies do not have a monopoly maybe on programs what you like about the f fact what you like about it is the fact that Anyone can say anything or do anything. Uh, from my standpoint, from where I am, because of the, uh, by virtue of the fact that I am a pop singer yeah. and writer, um, I, I really, I really like, I embrace the idea that there's a new demystification process going on between the artist and the audience. Um, I think when you look back at, say, this last decade, there hasn't really been one single entity, artist or group that have personified or become the brand name for the 90s. It, like it was starting to fade a little in the 80s and in the 70s there were still definite artists in the 60s there were the Beatles and the Hendrix and in the 50s there was Presley. Now it's uh, subgroups and genres. It's hip hop, it's girl power, it's a, a, diff it's a communal kind of thing. Yeah. It's about the community. It's becoming more and more about the audience because the point of having somebody who led the forces has disappeared because the vocabulary of rock is too well known. It's a currency that is not, um, it's not devoid of meaning anymore, but it's certainly only a conveyor of information now. It's not a conveyor of rebellion. And the internet has taken on that, as I say. Um, and, uh, and so I find that a terribly exciting area. So from my standpoint, being a, a, an artist, I like to see what the new construction is between artist and, and audience. There is a breakdown. There's a, uh, personified, I think, by the, uh, the rave culture of the last few years, where the audience is at least as important as whoever is playing at the rave. Um, it's almost like the artist is to accompany the, the audience and what the audience are doing. And that feeling is very much permeating music and, and, and permeating the internet. But what is it specifically about the internet? I mean, anybody can say anything. Uh, yeah. And it all adds up to what? I mean, it seems to me there's no, there's nothing cohesive about it in the way that there was something cohesive about the, re the youth revolution in music. Oh, but the, absolutely. And because I think that we, uh, at the time, up until at least the mid-70s, really felt that we were still living under the, uh, uh, or with, in the guise of a, a single and absolute uh, created society where there were known truths and known lies and there was no kind of duplicity or pluralism about the things that we believed in. That started to break down rapidly in the 70s. And the idea of a, a duality in the way that we live, in, in there are always two, three, four, five sides to every question, that this singularity disappeared. And uh, that, I believe, has produced such a medium as the internet, which absolutely establishes and shows us that we are living in total fragmentation. You don't think that some of the claims being made for it are, are hugely exaggerated? I mean, when the telephone was invented, people made amazing claims. I for know, it. the NGs, president, for example. The president at the time, when it was first invented, he was outrageous. He said he foresaw the day in the future when every town in America would have a telephone. Now, that, what, how dare he claim like that? Absolute bullshit. No, you see, I don't, I don't, I don't agree. I don't agree. I think the internet. I don't think we've even seen the tip of the iceberg. I think the potential of what the internet is going to do to society, both good and bad, is unimaginable.
I think we're actually on the cusp of something exhilarating and terrifying. It's just a tool, though, isn't it? No, it's not. No. No, it's an alien life form. What do you think? I mean, when you think then about the Is there life on Mars? <laughs> yes, it's just landed here. But yeah. that's, it's a simply a different delivery system there. You're arguing about something more profound. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about the, the, the actual context and the state of content is going to be so different to anything that we can really envisage at the moment, where the interplay between the user and the provider will be so in simpatico, it's going, to, it's going to crush our ideas of what m mediums are all about. Uh, but it's happening in every form. Mm -hmm. It's happening in visual art. The breakthroughs of the early part of the century with people like Duchamp, who were so prescient in what they were doing and putting down, the idea that the piece of work is not finished until the audience come to it and add their own interpretation, and what the piece of art is about is the grey space in the middle that grey space in the middle is what the 21st century is going to be about. You were supposed to raise 30 million by selling yes, um, it did. Uh, rights to your earnings, future, future earnings on your, your on the back catalogue. Back yeah. Catalog, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't there come a point at which there's no point in earning any more money? Do you know how expensive it is to get involved in the internet? <laughs> uh, I think that I, I probably, the majority of the money that I make goes, I plough back into some some new project or other. Uh, I also, of course, being working class, always w feel that there's never enough to leave my family. So I, th there's a kind of a survival instinct that, okay, I could definitely, that's going to be fine. I can leave that to all the kids' future and past. Um, and uh, everybody will be okay. However, I would love to start a new internet company as well, so I'll need a bit more for that. So you kind of get a bit... Uh, plow you just keep ploughing it back in. I'm not a buyer of things. I think the only thing that I buy, uh, addictively and obsessively probably, is uh, uh, art, you know? I'm not really a house man or a car man. The only nice car I've ever bought for myself was uh, 1967 E-Type one and a half, which is quite, I would get the half. And I don't have things, I don't have a, a plane, I don't have a, mm. uh, I, haven't, oh, I haven't got very much, Joe. I'm not a buyer of stuff, I'm much rather, I do tend to regard money as the oil to get other things going. I'm much, uh, I feel more comfortable with it right now. Do you have any desire to come back here? I'd love to come back here and I will. We haven't decided when it'll be, but that's an absolute, uh, given. There's a few other things I want to get accomplished over the next, I'd say, two years uh, that may be quite surprising to people. What do you make of Cool Britannia? Oh, lumpen. It's, it's so cliched and, and silly and uh, ineffective, I think. I don't think it's really changed. I think it might have... Uh, I think it's helped the media get some handle on how to describe these times, but I don't think anybody else anywhere believes it. You know, mm -hmm. there's good and bad in everything that we do. We're brilliant architects, got some wonderful artists, uh, visual mm -hmm. artists, and some rubbish in, uh, artists as well. Music, uh, we've always been good at music. We're not truly a rock nation. Everything that we do in rock and roll has a, a sense of irony attached to it. Uh, mm -hmm. We we just don't, we know that we're not the Americans. We know it didn't spring from our souls um, and so as the British always do they try and do something with it to make them feel smug mm. and that's what we're good at doing but when you see politicians uh, mm. embracing rock stars I mean personally I start reaching for my revolver then or well, at least I wear a pair of women's high heels when I meet our prime minister <laughs> I do my bit still he didn't even notice you know what this was Tony Blair mm. He didn't notice you were wearing I'm women's wearing a women's stiletto shoes and a nice suit and tie. That's the last time I wore a tie, I think. No, it wasn't. No, I wore, I wore a Vickers dog collar. Nice black suit, black shirt with a, a dog collar and a pair of women's high heels. And uh, he didn't bat an eyelid. Thank you very much.